invite you to hear this story on this poem, Passion Sunday, from the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus went Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and not a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we know that the shouts of Hosanna will quickly turn to shouts of crucify him. As we begin this journey through Holy Week, awaken us, move us, shake us, disturb us, challenge us, strengthen us, and above all, give us life in your name. Amen. You may have heard about the little boy who was sick on Palm Sunday. And so he stayed home from church with his mother and his father returned from church holding a palm branch like one of these. And the little boy was curious and asked, why do you have that palm branch, Dad? And the dad said, you see, when Jesus came into town, everyone waved palm branches to honor him. And so we got palm branches today. And the little boy replied, oh, man, the one Sunday I miss is the Sunday that Jesus finally shows up. Jesus does show up this day in a new way. And Jesus, as we know, will continue to show up in very unique and life-giving ways this week. This week, eight days that changed the world. These eight days have been the topic of a million, millions of public publications, countless debates and thousands of films. These eight days have inspired the greatest painters and architects, the most gifted musicians. To try and calculate the cultural impact of these eight days is impossible. But harder still would be an attempt to account for the lives of men and women who have been transformed by these eight days. And what happened on those eight days? On Sunday, this day, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey to the shouts of Hosanna, fulfilling an old prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. On Monday, he walked into the Jerusalem temple, overturning tables where the authorities were cheating people and making the temple a place of profit rather than a place of prayer. On Tuesday, Jesus taught in parables, warned against the Pharisees, and predicted the destruction of the temple. On Wednesday, the fourth day, we know nothing. The gospel writers are silent. Perhaps it was a day of rest for Jesus and his weary disciples. On Thursday, in an upper room, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples, but he gave it a new meaning. No longer would his followers remember the exodus from Egypt in the breaking of the bread. They would remember his broken body and shed blood. And later that evening in the Garden of Gethsemane, he agonized in prayer 
at what lay ahead of him. On Friday, the fifth day, following betrayal, arrest, imprisonment, desertion, false trials, denial, condemnation, beatings, and sentencing, Jesus carried his own cross to the place of the skull where he was crucified with two other prisoners. On Saturday, Jesus lay dead in the tomb, a tomb bought by a rich man named Joseph. On Sunday, his passion was over. The stone had been rolled away. Jesus was alive. He appeared to Mary, to Peter, to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and to the eleven disciples gathered in a locked room. But before we get there, we begin with this day. Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, a day of turmoil. The definition of turmoil you'll find in the dictionary is this, a state of great disturbance, confusion, or uncertainty. Some similar words for turmoil you'll find in a thesaurus, upheaval, turbulence, disorder, agitation, unrest, disquiet, trouble, disruption, chaos, mayhem. Most of us don't like turmoil. Why would we? We see families and businesses and churches in turmoil. We see countries around the entire world in turmoil. In fact, 2016 set a new and troubling record with an estimated 65 million people displaced from their homes by turmoil, war, conflict, persecution. Or there's the turmoil of the the famine in Africa threatening 20 million people. Such turmoil like this is so foreign to our context. Still, some might say that our own culture in our country is in turmoil. Just pick an individual or a couple or a family in any given pew in this sanctuary today, and there is most likely some kind of turmoil that has happened or is happening or will happen. We don't like turmoil. We prefer the opposite of turmoil, peace. But the irony of this day is that Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem in triumph, and it was a journey to the cross. And as Jesus rides into the town over the people's coats and palms on this road, crowds shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. But Matthew, Matthew's account tells it this way, that the whole city was in turmoil. Imagine the scene in Jerusalem. There is an unusual courage of common people, forgotten people, who have experienced a presence so powerful, a message so compelling, a love so complete, that they sacrificially make the journey to Jerusalem with Jesus. And many of them live in the villages and towns outside of Jerusalem, and others have traveled far distances. His ministry has captured their imaginations and nourish their souls as they have followed him to open plain revivals and enjoyed feasts out in the fields. They've experienced his healing touch. They've witnessed his miracles. They've listened to the good news that was for each and every one of them. Good news indeed. This sense of anticipation and excitement must have been hard to handle as they begin this journey, flanking Jesus on all sides with no concern for safety. And surely they are aware that the religious authorities, the leaders, consider Jesus a threat. And yet their hosannas intensify as they approach the city gate. For them, at least at this moment, Jesus has become the undeniable expression of God's presence in the world. And by the time Jesus and his entourage enter Jerusalem, The whole city is in turmoil. The word translated here is seo, which literally means to shake, to agitate, cause to tremble. The same word is used when referring to the earthquake at Jesus' final breath upon the cross and at the appearance of the angel at the empty tomb. The shaking of the earth is associated with the presence of God throughout Scripture. When the the Messiah comes, 
It is an earth-shaking event. We know the crowds will change their tune at the trial, calling for Pilate to crucify Jesus. So right now, we could probably say that they have all the notes, but none of the music. For now, they seem to recognize by their reaction that Jesus is the one for whom they have been waiting because the whole city is in turmoil. I find that word turmoil difficult to look past. Palm Passion Sunday is not merely a commemoration of a past event or another excuse for a parade. It's a cosmic event that holds a lot of weight. It's a moment for us, the church, I believe, to be part of an earth-shaking event. It causes turmoil. And Matthew's use of this word turmoil is very intentional because he knows the state of great disturbance that is on its way, if it hasn't been already. Matthew knows that only when we stop blending into the world that is can we help God create the world that should be. We all know the story of Palm Sunday. So what are we going to do about it? Remember, friends, when wherever Jesus went, whatever Jesus did, some kind of turmoil followed him. Some kind of barrier-breaking reality invaded people's hardened hearts and minds. Some shattering truth made its way into a sinner's life. He disrupted the norm. He brought a sense of chaos by challenging how things ought to be and how people ought to live and think and see. He troubled those who thought they had it all figured out. He shook the earth with good news for those who didn't think there was any good news for them. Jesus caused turmoil. As his followers... We ought to cause turmoil as well, I suppose. So many of us Christians, myself included, at times have grown so decent and so orderly and so prim and proper, so stuck that we've forgotten maybe how to cause turmoil. Maybe we've spaced out a little bit on the core of the gospel, which is about, in a sense, total mayhem and turbulence and disturbance and agitation of God's love making its way into people's lives. The turmoil of the gospel starts all over again right here in this low-budget parade of sorts to eight days from now when it will really shake things up. It's so easy, though, to skip over the horrors that will take place this holy week. After all, we know the outcome. We know how the story ends. Let's just get to Easter. Let's, let's bypass the difficult stuff. But I want to encourage you today that, to recognize that Palm Sunday has a real sneaky way of inviting us to not just see the old thing, but to see how Jesus did not come in triumph and was not crucified and raised and communities of believers in him did not emerge in order to leave the world, the ways of the world, as they are. Mahatma Gandhi as you know, led the people of India through a, a passive resistance that ended in their liberation from British domination. And Gandhi based his methods on the person and actions of Jesus Christ. And of this method, he once said, first they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. The whole city was asking a pretty tumultuous question. Who is this? Who is this man? The question is asked of us today as well. Who is this? Do we really want to know who this man is? Do we really want to stand with the one who comes in the name of the Lord? If we do, then get ready for some turmoil. When the Lord comes, it is an earth-shaking event. And my prayer as we enter this week is that the events of this day will continue to shake things up, to shake us up, to shake up the church, to shake up our culture, to shake up the world, 
to cause great disturbance and turmoil in my life, in your life, in our life together. Because despite the laughter and the fighting that may come our way that Gandhi talked about, we've already won. We've already won. So let the turmoil begin. Embrace the turmoil. Amen.